Well, it is lunchtime again out here in the woods, and I have a super simple, super easy, extremely tasty meal for you. Pizza in a pot. If you're interested in hearing more about pizza in a pot, keep watching. So where did the idea come for pizza in a pot? Well, it came from an old YouTube video that I had watched many years ago, in fact, and re-watched recently because I was looking for some recipes of things that were low carb or keto in nature that I can make out in the woods. And I came across this video, as I mentioned, I had watched before, and it's from a channel that I'm still subscribed to, although they're not producing any videos anymore. And that is known as Savage Citizen. And the person on the channel is Joe Mobley. Before the channel was Savage Citizen, it was known as Feral Woodcraft. And I watched his videos all the time. Joe did some amazing stuff. I wish he would come back and do some more. But he did a number of cooking videos involving some very simple ingredients put together very easily for a quick lunch in the wood. And this one was one of his low carb versions. So that's what I want to share with you. So what we'll do is I'll take it down to my prep surface. I'll show you what's involved in putting this together. I'll talk about the differences between what I'm doing and what Joe did. And then we'll get it on the fire and we'll cook it up. So I think it's gonna take almost as long to tell you about the recipe as it is to cook it. That's how quick and fast it is. So basically all you need is a pot of some type. This is my open country two liter pot, I think it is. Uh, I'm glad I picked one of these up before the open country went out of business because this is a hard anodized pot of the highest quality yet still very lightweight. So that's what I'm gonna be cooking everything in. You could do it in any pot at all. You could do this in a pan. You don't have to do it in a pot, but uh, I'll show you why I'm doing it in a pot in a minute. So all that's involved is using some pizza toppings that you might normally have for any pizza you'd make at home. In this case, I have a, whew, Boy, the onion strong, is strong in this. I have exactly that. I have some chopped up onion, some chopped up red and green peppers, and I have some chorizo sausage and some locally made pepperoni, which we love here. It's called Brothers Pepperoni. All I'm gonna do is put some oil, or in this case, ghee, in the bottom of my pot, throw all of that in on top of the hot oil, I'm going to stir it around for a little while until all the vegetables become somewhat translucent. And then the secret ingredient, pizza sauce. I mean, that's, that's it. This is a, a pizza sauce, primo pizza sauce. I picked it up in the squeeze container rather than in the small can because I, I won't use near all of this, of course. I have done this with uh, tomato paste and I'm working on dehydrating some tomato sauces that I can come out here and do this completely from a dehydrated state. But right now, I'm still using fresh ingredients. And of course, you can't have pizza without cheese. So I have mozzarella and Parmesan all shredded up and ready to go. How much pizza sauce you want to put in is entirely up to you. I like to put in enough to kind of float everything inside of the pot, but that's about all. I don't need a lot. Now, in Joe's recipe, Joe starts very much the same way with sausage and pepperoni, I think salami and his vegetables, fries them up in his pot. Then he adds a can of condensed tomato soup to, to the pot and half a can of water. So his is more of a soup or a stew even than it is uh, a pizza. Now he throws a couple breadsticks in just, you know, just because. It, what's a pizza without bread in it? No crust in this one. I will do a baked pizza at some point, a low carb baked pizza at some point, but for now, this is going to be just what you see. The vegetables, the meats and cheese with some tomato sauce. So let's get this on top of the wood stove and we'll get it started. Like I said, it's probably going to take, took longer to talk about it than it is to actually make it. All right, I wanted the fire to die down just a little bit here in my, uh, titanium bush box XL from Bushcraft Essentials because I don't need a lot of heat. Don't want to burn anything. Put my pot on top and very quickly get some ghee into it. Probably a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. A little bit more. Ghee is such a great thing to cook and I know I say this often, but ghee is such a great thing to cook in because not only is it flavorful, it uh, has a high smoke point, higher than any of the other oils, and is good for you. Clarified butter. So that's starting to heat up. I may have to add a stick now and then just to keep a little bit of flame going in the stove. I just don't want it too hot. All right, and that's starting to 
melting up quickly. So once again, there it is, pepperoni, some chorizo sausage, all going in along with the peppers and the onions. Get every bit of them in there. Now for the pot, because I'm using a pot and not a uh, fry pan, I do have a pot holder that I can use to stir things around in with. And this is going to take a few minutes, obviously, for that to saute down a little bit to where the vegetables are all cooked. That's basically all you're doing is just making everything soft in there with the heat. So I will let that go for a couple of minutes, keep stirring, and I'll bring it back when it's time to add the cheese. I don't know, maybe seven or eight minutes. Added one more, two more pieces of wood. Checked on it a few times. Doesn't take very long. Let's get the lid off. I think I'm going to end up having to leave the lid off for a period of time anyway, because last time I looked, there was quite a bit of moisture down inside. So you can see everything sauteing down. Yeah, there's a little bit of moisture inside that's coming out of the vegetables. Nothing sticking, nothing burning, which is what you're, what I was hoping for. But what I can do right now is that steams off the little extra moisture, put in my pizza sauce. So once again, I'm using pizza sauce, literally from the store. Be careful if you're on a low carb diet and uh, you're trying to avoid sugar especially, even this has a little bit of sugar in it, but for a very small amount, I think it is, I'm gonna have to get my glasses on, I think it's one, gram of sugar per quarter, per half cup. Okay, so that's not bad. I won't lose, use more than half a cup. I prefer to have a pizza sauce that has no sugar, but the, but the only way you're gonna get that is make it yourself, which I have done and I will be doing again. But for this uh, trip out, I just decided to buy some. How much? That much, that's how much I'm putting in. Not a lot. I'll mix that through, and I'm going to let that steam in. Of course, it has to warm up anyway. Yeah, actually, that's just about where I want it in terms of the amount of pizza sauce or tomato sauce. Could have a little bit more. Once again, if you put more in or if you used a soup, uh, it would still be fine, wouldn't it? It's what you want. If you want it more like a soup or a stew, then by all means. I've tasted the pizza sauce. It was just a little lacking, both in garlic and in some heat. So, reached into my spice kit, got a few things to put into it. Stir that through. And we're almost ready for the cheese. Okay, I'm gonna give that another minute just to steam off a little bit more of the moisture. And then I'll add the cheese. Okay, I've just got some nice low heat. Some nice coals going on inside of the stove, just what I need. I've got a slow bubbling simmer, nothing sticking to the bottom of the pot. Thickening up nicely, let's see if I can show you this. Looks a lot like pizza without a crust, right? Well, at least that's what it's supposed to look like. One more ingredient, cheese. And all I'm gonna do with this is literally just spread it on and then let it melt in. It won't crust over like it does in an oven, but it will at least melt. And I'll give that a few minutes to melt the cheese, and then it's time to take it off the stove, put it in a bowl, and give it a taste test. Oh, it's hot now. It is hot now. I don't know if you can see that. I gotta put a glove down for the, put the pot on. All right, let's see if we can transfer some of this over to my bowl. Cheese is all melty, gooey. All right, okay, very good. All that's left now is the taste test. Okay. Here's my pizza, or pot pizza, or what I've been calling it anyway. I'm gonna try and tilt the camera down so you can see what it is that I am eating. 
can see all the cheese melted through there, some pepperoni sausage and all the vegetables and the tomato sauce. Man, I can't wait. Okay, so I guess <laughs> when it's a pizza made in a pot, served in a bowl, you can't pick it up like you can a pizza with a crust. So what do you eat it with? A spoon or a fork? Well, I've got my spoon and my fork. I'm going to try both. I think the spoon actually will work well for this. Ooh, hot. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Okay. Despite being hot, my first impression was, if you've got a brand new fresh pizza right out of the box from the pizza place, and you were to peel off some of the toppings and shove it in your mouth without, using, without taking the crust with it, that's what this is like. It's got that same cheesy goodness, the same oil that you would find on the top of a pizza crust, the spices, the meat, the vegetables, it's all there. It's all there. The only thing missing is the crust, honestly. Because the taste is definitely all there. So why did I make it without a crust? Low carb, ketogenic version of a pizza. Yes, that's, there's definitely a part of it. That's what I wanted. I wanted a meal that would fit those criteria. But more than that, how easy was that to make? Throw everything to a pan to or, or a pot, stir it and cook it for a little while, throw your pizza sauce on, cover it with cheese, let it melt, serve. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. It really doesn't. That's not to say that I don't want to make a good low-carb pizza with a crust out here in the woods, and my plan is to do exactly that. So if that's something you're interested in hearing or watching, it'll come at some point in the future. It's a matter of coming up with the right crust that is as much like a pizza crust as I can get it, but still be low-carb in nature. Look at that. Gooey cheese. Mmm still warm. Okay, I mentioned one other thing a few minutes ago, and that was um, I made this with fresh ingredients. Uh, the cheese was all pre-shredded. The uh, meat was all pre-cut up. I did that at home before I came out. I cut the vegetables all up. So it all came out fresh. Now, the meat would last for a couple of days without question because it's all pre-cooked, uh, it's dried meats. The cheese might have lasted another day or two, especially if I had not grated it at home, it would have lasted a little bit longer, especially if I kept it in an airtight container. The vegetables, maybe not so much. They wouldn't last too long. So I'm looking to working, or I'm working towards dehydrated foods that I can prepare meals with that don't require refrigeration and are low carb or keto in nature. So I've started dehydrating a number of things, including cans of tomatoes, just pureed them down and put them in my dehydrator. I can share how I did that at some point if you're interested. So I, well, I guess what I'm looking for is recipes. If you are on a low carb ketogenic diet and you've been doing this, preparing meals for the outdoors from dehydrated foods, I'd be interested in having you share some recipes with me. And if, if you do, of course, if, if as long as you're okay with it, I'd like to share your name with all the other viewers uh, as the person who came up with the idea for whatever meal it is that I bring out to the woods. One more bite. Mm. Thank you, Joe. I don't know if Joe watches my videos. I'd love to see, Joe, if you are watching, I'd love to see you make some videos again. Maybe everybody should jump over to Savage Citizen, Citizen and throw a few comments out there to see if Joe is still around and maybe interested in making some videos again because this was one of the treasures. Simple as it was, that's what makes a meal like this so good. Simple is good in this case. Thank you, Joe, for the inspiration. Uh, the nice thing, as Joe says, you can customize this any way you want. You don't have to do it the way I did it. You can put any number of things together and come up with a pizza. I mean, ideally, uh, ground beef, bacon, bacon, right? Uh, you know, there's any number of things I could have put in here, but this is what I chose for a simple version of it today. Okay, that's all I have to share with you. If I have any questions about how I prepared this or anything else I've done in the video, then uh, please comment in the comments section below. If you have any suggestions for future videos, put those in the comments section below. But as always, get out and explore 
and take that path left traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.